What is the significance of the Aztec Eagle Man? The Eagle Man, c. 1440-1469, is a 67-inch high. Fired clay sculpture depicting a youthful man wearing an eagle-shaped helmet and long, winged sleeves. The upper portion of the sculpture is well rendered, but overall. The body is simplistic, and it was possibly dressed in military garments. The sculpture perhaps depicts an Aztec warrior. Aztec warriors were known for their fearlessness and ferocity. How did Giotto become so famous? Giotto was a 13th century celebrity. Discovered by master artist Simaba drawing sheep while tending to his flock. As the story goes, he eventually achieved star power not seen by any artist before him. He was written about by Giorgio Vasari, discussed at length by the artist writer, Senino Senini. And mentioned by Leonardo da Vinci as one of the most important artists who came before him. Vasari explained what made Giotto famous, he set art upon the path that may be called the true one. As quoted in Stockstad, Art History, p. 608, Vasari went on to explain that it was Giotto who made the biggest visual breakthroughs in depicting a realistic sense of three-dimensional space in his painting. Giotto's masterpiece is the fresco series he painted inside the Arena Chapel in Padua, Italy. Made for the Scrovengi family and completed around 1305, the frescoes cover the barrel vaulted chapel walls in deep lapis blue. And are dotted with stars and discs featuring the portraits of saints. Giotto paints a narrative by dividing the wall up into quadrants. Each telling a different part of the story of the life of Christ and the Virgin Mary. Each scene has a sense of depth and the figures are realistically. Modeled by using dark shades for shadow, and whiter shades for highlights. The largest fresco in the series is The Last Judgment, at the west wall of the chapel. In the Last Judgment, Christ raises his hand in blessing. The saved are grouped on Christ's right side and the damned descend to hell on the left. The patron, Enrico Scrovengi, is shown offering his family chapel to Christ in an attempt to cleanse his sins. The Renaissance artist Lorenzo Ghiberti said the Arena Chapel was one of the glories of the earth. Quoted in Art Past Art Present 241 What is the Renaissance? The word Renaissance is a French word meaning rebirth. The Renaissance is generally considered to be a rebirth of classical, Greco-Roman, culture. Which resurfaced after the dark days following the fall of the Roman Empire in the 4th century. This, however, is an oversimplification. Changes such as the development of cities, a growing European economy. 
and strong support for the arts by wealthy patrons all contributed to the birth of the Renaissance. The balanced, harmonious, and naturalistic paintings associated with the Renaissance did not burst onto the art and culture scene of Europe overnight. It happened slowly over the course of the 14th and 15th centuries. Beginning in Florence, Italy, and was at least partly inspired by a newfound interest in translating classical Greek manuscripts, and the study of Roman ruins. When did printmaking begin? By the 16th century, printing technology, such as the woodcut, had been around for hundreds of years, first developing in China in the 5th century. Printmaking was first used to apply patterns to textiles, and then later was used on paper. Intaglio processes, such as engraving and etching, developed in Germany in the middle of the 15th century. Evolved from techniques used by goldsmiths and jewelers. Printmaking allowed artists to make multiple copies of a text or an image and mass production of prints began in the 16th century, forever changing the consumption of art images and texts. Were there any professional women artists during the 15th and 16th centuries? Yes. There were many highly regarded women artists working during the Renaissance and the years after in both Italy and Northern Europe. Here are just a few of the approximately 30 known women. Properzia de Rossi, 1490-1530, Bolognese miniature painter and sculptor trained by Marcantonio Raimondi Lavina Tierlink, c. 1510-1576, miniature painter who worked for the English courts of Edward VI, Mary I, and Elizabeth I. Received high acclaim, though none of her works survive Katerina van Hemessen. C.1527 C.1566, painted portraits and religious scenes, worked for the court of Mary, regent of the Netherlands and later the Spanish court Sophonis by Anguissala. 1531-1626, Cremonesa painter who served as a court painter for King Philip II of Spain. Sister Lucia was also a skilled artist Diana Scultori Gassi, 1547 to 1612, an engraver also known as Diana Mantovina or Diana Mantuina, first woman to be permitted to print and sell her work under her own name Lavinia Fontana. 1552 to 1614, mother of 11 children commissioned to paint the martyrdom of St. What is the Codex Zushnetal? The Codex Zushnetal, c. 1350-1400, is a folded pictographic manuscript from the post-classic Mixtec culture in Mexico, one of the few to survive. The 10 inch high manuscript, made of deer skin, 
contains about 46 folded pages and when stretched out reaches over 36 feet. Each side of the folded codex contains a different story. One telling the history of the Mistec region, and the other explaining the genealogy and political. Successes of Eight Deer Jaguar Claw, a powerful 11th century Mistec ruler. The Codex Zush Nuthal is the oldest Mistec history known by scholars. What is the Villa Rotunda? The Villa Rotunda was a residence designed by the architect Palladio in the 1560s. Palladio, who wrote four books on architecture, was greatly inspired by the Roman temple form. He was interested in architectural theory, ideal proportions, and the classical orders. Similar in form to the Pantheon in Rome, the Villa Rotunda is completely symmetrical. With a projecting portico on each square side and is topped with a hemispherical dome. Palladio's work went on to inspire architects for centuries, especially in Britain and the United States. What is Machu Picchu? Machu Picchu was a 15th century royal estate constructed by the Inca King Pachacuti, high in the Andes Mountains near Cuzco, Peru. A great deal of mystery and wonder surrounds this long-forgotten and well-preserved site. Which caught public attention, and public imagination. After American archaeologist Hiram Bingham studied it in 1911, Machu Picchu sits at an elevation of 9,000 feet. The site consists of stone buildings, terraced farm plots, open plazas, and religious shrines. The architecture at Machu Picchu matches other Inca sites and was built out of granite using Inca masonry techniques. A style of stone construction that consisted of joining pillow-shaped blocks without mortar. Similar construction can be seen throughout the city of Cuzco. As well as on a large scale in the fortress palace, Saksawaman, in the hills outside of the city. What is Mannerism? While many of the most successful artists of the early 16th century followed the classical aesthetic so popular during the Renaissance, not everyone did. Overall, Renaissance artists valued naturalistic representations of the ideal human. Both physically and mentally, and art with balanced, symmetrical, and proportionate forms. It can come as a shock. Therefore, to see works such as Bronzino's All Jory with Venus and Cupid. An erotic and slightly disturbing painting of Venus kissing her son, Cupid. The painting is filled with twisted, elongated figures. They appear weightless, limbs seem attached at odd angles, and the colors are off. Behind Cupid's contorted body, a woman screams, grabbing her hair. To the right, a cherub hurls flowers like a weapon. At his feet, 
Theatrical masks depict ugly faces. Although allegory with Venus and Cupid may be a sensational example. It is certainly not the only early 16th century painting to exhibit such anomalies of naturalism. Other artists, including Pio Antormo, Parmigianino, and Benvenuto Cellini. Favored what is known as the Mannerist style in Italy. The definition of Mannerism is controversial, but it is generally thought of as an intellectual and rebellious alternative to the refined styles of High Renaissance. It is characterized by elongated figures in unstable poses. The use of pastel colors, and sometimes, sexual overtones. Mannerist art was popular amongst courtly, rather than religious, patrons. While the style developed in Italy, it was also popular in Northern Europe. Who was Sophonis Baanguisola? It is true that most professional artists in Europe at this time were men. It was not easy for women to be accepted by patrons and male-dominated guilds. There were women artists, however, and the women who painted professionally were usually part of artist families. Such as Katerina van Hemessen and the Baroque painter Artemisia Gentileschi, the Cremonese painter. Sophonis by Anguissala, c. 1532-1625, was different. She was the oldest of seven children in a noble family. Whose father was a classical enthusiast interested in giving a humanist education to all of his children. He recognized Sophonis Ba's natural talent and sent her to train under a respected local painter. Bernardino Campi. She gained esteem for her portraits, including a number of engaging self portraits, as well as paintings of the Virgin Mary. She was asked by King Philip II of Spain to serve as a lady-in-waiting to his third wife. Isabel de Valois, an extremely high honor written about by Giorgio Vasari. There. She painted portraits of the Queen and experimented with mirrors in her self-portraits. In 1552 she painted a miniature portrait, a popular way of depicting friends and loved ones in which she depicted herself holding a large medallion. Her name encircles the edge of the medallion while an interlaced monogram made up of her sister's names is in the center. The miniature is now at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Who was Guyam Baladna? Guyam Baladna, 1529 to 1608, was an extremely successful late Mannerist sculptor who was known by many names, including Jean de Boulogne and Giovanni de Bologna. Though he was born in Flanders in Northern Europe, he worked in Florence. Where he received support from the Medici family and other Flemish patrons living in the Italian city. Much of his work was done in marble and bronze, his work often features energetic figures. Engaged in dramatic physical activity, as well as graceful, elongated female figures. 
he was a master at creating complex poses with multiple figures. Including the rape of the Sabina and the fountain of Neptune. His most famous sculpture is probably Mercury, c. 1565, which represents the Roman messenger god, Hermes, in Greek. Balancing delicately on a small puff of wind, blown by the god, Zephyr. Winged Mercury reaches one hand to the sky with a long finger pointing vertically. With one leg bent back, almost like a dancer. The sculpture was a gift from Cosimo de' Medici to Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian II. What is the difference between the Baroque and the Renaissance? One of the main giveaways that you are looking at a Baroque painting. Rather than a work done in the Renaissance is the overall dramatic effect. Whereas paintings from the Renaissance are evenly lit, balanced. And symmetrical, Baroque paintings usually feature strong diagonals. Intense contrasts between dark and light tones, chiaroscuro, and ornate decoration. Swiss art critic Heinrich Wolf Flynn created a list of polarities. Or points of contrast between Renaissance and Baroque art in his influential text, Principles of Art History. These polarities can be applied to architecture, painting, and sculpture. The final two, indicated with an asterisk, are the most complex. And are controversial amongst art critics and historians. When reading through these contrasting characteristics, think about Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper, c. 1495 to 1498, as a good example of a Renaissance painting, while Tintoretto's Last Supper. 1594, is more characteristic of the Baroque style. What is porcelain? Porcelain is a type of fine ceramic that supposedly got its name from Marco Polo. Who first visited China from Europe in the 13th century. There are two types of porcelain, hard paste, known as true porcelain. And soft paste, known as artificial porcelain. Hard paste porcelain was first developed in China in the 7th or 8th century. And wasn't seen in Europe until the early 18th century. Porcelain is made of fine white clay and requires a very high temperature in the kiln when fired. Blue and white painted porcelain from the Ming period is among the most expensive and most highly sought after ceramics in the world. Ming painters used cobalt glazes from Persia and designed heavily outlined images. Dragons and nature themes were very popular. What is a book of ours? A book of ours is a private prayer book, which became popular in the 13th and 14th centuries as literacy levels among the European nobility increased. 
the books included specific prayers to be recited at certain times or hours of the day and night, and were often devoted to the Virgin Mary. A book of hours was a valuable object, and owning one was a sign of wealth. One of the most masterfully decorated books of hours from the 14th century is the hours of Jean de Avrouz. Why was Florence an important Renaissance city? The Renaissance is said to have begun in Florence in the 15th century. A period known as the Quattro Centro. At this time, Florence was not just a city, but a city-state, much like the city-states of ancient Greece. 15th century Florence was also a republic with a constitution. Though it was a far cry from a democracy. Florence was an economic powerhouse with a lot of civic pride. Money was pumped into civic projects such as cathedral building, architectural decoration and artist competitions, all in an attempt to beautify the city and enjoy the pleasures of wealth. Florentine patrons supported the careers of important artists such as Masiccio, Donatello, and Guy Verdi, whose innovative work kick-started the Renaissance. Who were key proto-Renaissance painters in Siena? Thirteen and fourteenth century Siena, about forty miles southwest of Florence, was a hotbed of late Gothic, pre-Renaissance art production. The art of Siena rivaled that of any other city of the age. One of the most important artists working in Siena, Duccio di Boninsegna, referred to simply as Duccio, is considered to be the father of Sienese painting. Duccio is known for the Maista altarpiece he made for the Siena Cathedral. Between 1308 and 1311, this piece is influenced by earlier Byzantine styles of art. The enormous altarpiece, originally made up of over 50 panels, is dominated by red and gold colors and presents the Virgin Mary enthroned as the Queen of Heaven in the center panel. Her highly decorative throne opens up as if welcoming viewers into an embrace. A big change from the flatness of earlier Gothic and Byzantine images. Mary is surrounded by a sea of saints, each framed by the flat disc of a halo behind the head. The infant Christ, imagined as a small man, sits weightlessly in Mary's lap. Unfortunately, this beautiful example of Sienese art was dismantled in the 18th century and sold piece by piece to museums and private collections. Some remaining pieces have been reassembled and are on display in the Siena Cathedral. Who was Bronzino? Bronzino was the nickname of Florentine artist Agnolo di Cosimo. 1503-1572, who studied under Pontormo, a fellow Mannerist painter. 
Bronzino's most significant patron was the Medici family, for whom he completed many projects, including altarpieces and frescoes. Today, his portraits are among his most well known paintings, particularly his portrait of a young man. Painted in the 1530s, and now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. The identity of the young portrait sitter is unknown. But he is likely a friend of Bronzino's who ran in the same literary circles. Bronzino also wrote poetry. The sitter holds his finger gingerly between the pages of a book, eliciting curiosity about its contents. The well dressed young man is poised. With good posture and an air of confidence that is only belied by his slightly crossed eyes. He seems to be fully aware of his own superficial airs. He is as much of a mask as the faces carved into the side of the ornate table. This is Bronzino's skill the artist has an ability to purposefully pose his sitter for the viewer. To make us aware that we can only see the cover, and not the contents of the book. What was the orchard factory? The Orchard Factory was a Chinese imperial palace workshop during the Ming Dynasty, 1368-1644. The Orchard Factory primarily produced lacquered wood. Furniture and decorative objects of astonishing quality. Lacquer is a clear wood finish derived from tree sap that acts as a preserver. Lacquer can be colored with pigments. Multiple layers of lacquer can be carved, and it can also be inlaid with precious stones and metals. A fine example of the lacquer work likely produced by the Orchard Factory is a Ming era folding. Chair dating from the mid 16th century, now at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. The folding chair, used by Chinese emperors while traveling, is ornately decorated with stylized dragon and lotus flower motifs. How did the world change during the Baroque period? between the mid-16th century and the mid-18th century. Europe and the rest of the world went through significant changes. During this time, Europeans were engaged in the age of exploration they sent out fleets of ships into the world's oceans with various goals, including competition between one another for political domination economic expansion, and religious conversion of the people in the so-called New World. In Europe, the Thirty Years' War raged on from 1618 to 1648, forever shifting power on the continent, and weakening the Holy Roman Empire. Many significant scientific discoveries also took place during the Baroque period including Isaac Newton's discovery of gravity. Philosophy was impacted by Descartes' revolutionary statement. I think, therefore I am, making him the father of modern philosophy. Who was Hieronymus Mausbosch?
Hieronymus Bosch, 1450-1516, was a successful painter from the Netherlands who painted large, complex, usually Christian-themed works of art that continue to puzzle viewers and scholars to this day. An example of his imaginative and highly skilled work is the triptych, The Garden of Earthly Delights, which depicts the Garden of Eden on the left, earthly life in the center, and hell on the right. On the exterior of the triptych, Bosch painted what scholars believe is the creation of the earth. The Garden of Earthly Delights is filled with surreal imagery. Such as a bulbous pink fountain, a sharp knife with a pair of human ears. Figures cavorting inside transparent spheres, and monsters feeding on souls in hell. While some scholars believe certain images are metaphors for alchemy. A tradition of science and philosophy focused on turning various metals into gold. The work is generally considered to be a critique of human behavior, suggesting that sin will be punished in hell. Peter Brueck held the Elders Netherlandish Proverbs, 1559. Also known as the topsy-turvy world, is similarly focused on human folly. What is Moctezuma's crown? Moctezuma was the Aztec leader at the time of the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire. Led by Hernan Cortes. His crown was made of colorful feathers, from birds such as macaw parrots and the Quetzal bird which were gathered into bunches and then sewn into a reed frame studded with precious stones. The long feathers of Moctezuma's crown are dark green and the reed frame is painted in bright reds and light blues. The provenance of the crown has come under much scholarly debate but there is evidence that the crown was given to Cortes by Moctezuma himself. The crown was sent back to Europe on one of Cortes' ships and given to Charles V. The Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain. The headdress is currently in Austria, and negotiations are underway for the Austrian government to loan the crown back to Mexico for the first time in over 500 years. Who were the Lorenzetti brothers? The Lorenzetti brothers were Sienese painters who were influenced by the work of Duccio, the father of Sienese painting. Pietro, c.1280 c.1348, and Ambrogio, d.c. 1348, are known for their simple, yet noble paintings and innovations in creating a sense of real space in their work. Ambrogio painted monumental frescoes depicting an allegory of both good and bad government in Siena's main civic building. The Palazzo Publico, in 1338. The allegory of good government in the city. Visually describes the benefits of a just government on its people by depicting an idealized Siena. The complex fresco, filled with beautiful, multicolored buildings and allegorical figures achieves a natural sense of scale between the figures and the environment. On a nearby wall in the palazzo, 
the allegory of bad government in the city shows. What can happen when a city loses its way, the personified figures of avarice, pride, and glory lurk above the head of a brutish ruler while the people of the city suffer. What is the hours of Jean d'Evreux? The Hours of Jean d'Evreux is a 14th century book of hours illuminated by an artist. Named Jean Pucelle and was a gift from French King Charles IV to his third wife, Jean d'Evreux. The book may be tiny in terms of physical dimension. Only a few inches, in fact, but is big in terms of artistic innovation. It is known for its grisaille illustrations which feature a grey monochrome style that results in unique, sculpturesque figures. The illuminations, which often incorporate examples of Gothic architecture into the background, are innovatively rendered using spatial recession, creating a sense of depth not seen in earlier medieval painting. Is Baroque a bad word? The word Baroque comes from the Portuguese word, Baraco, which means imperfect pearl. The suggestion is that while Baroque art is as lovely as a pearl, it lacks the perfection and balance characterized by the Renaissance art that preceded it. Baroque art initially was used to describe a style of art that was more dramatic and intense than art from the Renaissance. But the term is sometimes used to refer generally to the 17th century in Europe. The term Baroque can also refer to architecture, music, dance, and literature. Some of the most famous Baroque artists include Caravaggio, Bernini, Rubens, Houssat, Rembrandt, and Velázquez. As with many art historical categories, the definition of Baroque can be relatively flexible. Who was Chimabui? In the lives of the artists, Giorgio Vasari describes the 13th century. Artist Simabo as the man who shed the first light on the art of painting. He is credited with innovations in naturalism, his art bridges the gap between the flat Byzantine style of painting and the more realistically proportioned style associated with the Renaissance. Comparing the work of Simabo and his apprentice, Giotto, the difference is clear. Simabo's panel painting, Virgin, and Child Enthroned, c. 1280, depicts the Virgin Mary and infant Christ surrounded by saints. The work is a blend of Gothic, Byzantine, style and newer Renaissance techniques. The folds of the drapery worn by the Virgin Mary are defined by gold lines. The figures of the saints are elongated and thin. Infant Christ appears to have the proportions of an adult. Despite the flatness and the stylized forms, Simabo scene is warm and real. The figures are naturally proportioned and their faces are thoughtful engaging, and diverse. 
Giotto's painting of the same scene represents a major shift away from Gothic styles and towards more realistic images of figures and of three-dimensional space. The solid form of Mary's body can be seen through her heavy blue robes and the infant Christ sits firmly upon her lap. The figures in Giotto's Virgin and Child enthroned are realistically modeled and Mary's throne appears to extend back into real space. What are Mistec mosaics? The indigenous Mistec people of Mexico and Central America were well known for their skills in pottery, metalworking, and mosaics. They used the mosaic technique to make brightly colored masks and used materials such as turquoise and pearl oyster shells to create colorful, luminescent pieces. The skull of the smoking mirror is a 16th century. Mistec mosaic mask that depicts the powerful god Tezcatlipoca. The mask itself is supported by a real human skull with the back. Removed and deer skin straps attached enabling the mask to be worn. The eyes of the mask are made with reflective iron pyrite and white shells. While the face is decorated in white, black, and turquoise stripes. As the materials needed to create this mask, such as turquoise, and black lignite, were difficult to source. It is clear that this was a highly valued object requiring time and effort to create. It also important to note that this mask was meant to be worn and had an important ritual function. The mask is now part of the collection at the British Museum. What is the Aztec calendar stone? Like the Mayans, the Aztec were deeply interested in calendars, which were linked to concepts of creation. The Aztec calendar stone, C1502-1520, is large over 11 feet in diameter and over 25 tons. Also called the sunstone, the carved stone emphasizes the Aztec concept of cyclical time and reflects the Aztec's cosmology and mythology. At the center of the stone is an image of the creature Alan, its tongue in the shape of a knife. Also depicted on the stone are the first four suns and the bodies of two fire gods according to Aztec tradition. The monumental carving is not exactly a marker of time. Though there are markings that indicate the 20-day Aztec calendar, and the date of the birth of the current, fifth, sun. The stone was excavated in the center of Mexico City which now lies at the heart of the former Aztec Empire, the city of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan was considered the birthplace of the fifth and current sun, and was the political center of the empire. Although the meaning of the Aztec calendar stone remains mysterious, its image continues to influence modern Mexican art and culture. What is a Zen garden?
Zen is a Japanese form of Buddhism that emphasizes meditation as a method of breaking free of everyday distractions to reach enlightenment. In China, this is known as Chan Buddhism. Zen gardens are an important part of the Buddhist tradition. As they are thought to aid in meditation and facilitate a sense of calm. The Sehoji Temple in Kyoto, Japan is sometimes called the Moss Temple because of its meticulously manicured moss gardens. The temple was founded in the 8th century. And its gardens were redesigned according to Zen philosophies during the Muromaki period in the 14th century. Monks meditate in the mossy lower gardens. While rocks dominate the upper gardens, suggesting the drama of mountains. Some Zen gardens focus completely on rock arrangements. Such as the rock garden at the Ryoenji Temple in Japan. Who was Giorgio Vasari? Giorgio Vasari, 1511-1574, was a mediocre painter and a more successful architect. But his real legacy was the biographies he wrote about important Renaissance artists. Lives of the most eminent painters, sculptors, and architects, often referred to as lives of the artists. It is through Vasari that we are introduced to the early Renaissance artists Simabo and Giotto. And here the details of disputes between Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. The book covers artists from Fra Angelico to Titian, Donatello to Salviati. Despite the book being filled with bias towards Italian artists, embellished stories, and historical inaccuracies. The impact his work had on art history and Renaissance scholarship cannot be ignored. What is stained glass? Stained glass is translucent colored glass set in a lead framework and usually used in windows. Stained glass was used in early Christian and Byzantine churches as well. But was particularly favored by Gothic architects for whom it began an important form of art. The process of making stained glass hasn't changed much in nearly a thousand years. The colors in the glass come from adding metal oxides to molten glass, a labor-intensive process. Detailed images are made by using black enamel paint and fusing it to the glass through firing. The glass artist then organizes the colored glass fragments on a flat surface. Like an enormous puzzle, until reaching the desired image and then joins the glass to lead strips and iron bands, which support the heavy glass. Who was Albrecht Dürer? Albrecht Dürer, 1471-1528, was a great master from Germany known for his immaculately detailed drawings, paintings, and prints. He wrote a book of advice for artists called, Four Books of Human Proportion, and was known to be self-confident and scientifically minded. 
like Leonardo da Vinci, Durer was interested in the observable world. He trained as a goldsmith, this is likely where he gained the skills and experience needed to become a successful printmaker. A form that allowed him to demonstrate his great skill in working with line. Durer's skill was clear from a young age. At 13, he completed a self-portrait upon which he wrote. Here I portrayed myself in the year 1484 in a mirror when I was still a child, as quoted in Woods. P54. Later self-portraits emphasized the luxurious texture of his long, flowing hair, and one of his most impressive drawings is a hair. 1502, in which Durer masterfully depicts the sheen of a hare's fur in watercolor. Dyer's woodcuts, engravings. And etchings did a great deal to raise the status of printmaking to a fine art. Two of his most well-known prints are the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. 1497 to 1498 and Melancholia I 1514 Who was Hans Holbein Hans Holbein the younger see 1497 to 1543, was a leading German painter who went on to become the court painter to English King Henry VIII. Holbein was a skilled realist with great ability to capture texture and fine detail. His work included religious paintings, prints, and even designs for stained glass windows. But he was particularly well known for his portraits, especially his portrait of Henry VIII in 1540. The painting depicts the formidably sized king dressed in his finest clothes against a dark background. The king wears an ornately embroidered coat with yellow, puffed sleeves, fine jewelry, and a feathered hat in celebration of his marriage to Anne of Clevis, his fourth wife. The oil paint captures the rich textures of the fabric and Holbein emphasizes the girth and power of the king's frame. The king's decision to invite a German painter, rather than an Italian artist, to his court highlights the strain between England and Italy after the Reformation. What is the Isenheim altarpiece? The Isenheim altarpiece, c. 1510-1515, is a highly realistic altarpiece painting done by the German painter Matthias Grunewald. Who was a painter at the court of the Archbishop of Mainz? The work is complex, incorporating exterior paintings on the wings of the altarpiece with interior paintings that are revealed upon opening. The exterior subject is the crucifixion of Christ. Painted in gruesome detail and emphasizing Christ's suffering against a dark background. His fingers are bent and broken and his emaciated body hangs heavily from the cross. The interior paintings are completed on multiple panels and include the Annunciation. The Virgin and Child with Angels, and the Resurrection. These interior works are brightly colored and emphasize hope and joy over suffering.
the physical act of opening the door is symbolic of the salvation that comes from Christ's sacrifice. The Eisenheim altarpiece is emotionally expressive and a powerful example of the role of art in the Christian tradition. What is the Proto-Renaissance? The Proto-Renaissance, essentially meaning pre-Renaissance, is a term art historians use to describe a change in the style of art towards the end of the Gothic period in which art begins to foreshadow the characteristics of the Renaissance in terms of naturalism, realism, and humanism. Different art history books will cite different date ranges for the Proto-Renaissance but it is generally considered to begin during the end of the 12th century and end during the early 14th century in Italy. Work by artists such as the Lorenzetti brothers, Simone Martini, Duccio, Simabu, and Giotto represent key shifts in style from Gothic to Renaissance. Famous writers and poets of the age include the poet Petrarch, who wrote love sonnets that went on to influence Shakespeare. Another poet, Dante Alighieri, wrote The Divine Comedy, an epic tale of the author's descent into hell. What is the Church of Tukasu? Built in the late 16th century by Giacomo della Porta. The Church of Il Gisù has what is considered to be the first Baroque facade in architecture. The church was built in Rome for the Order of the Jesuits. Its plan was similar to the traditional cruciform basilica plan, with a long nave and aisles. It was topped with a cupola, a small dome. More shocking at the time was the church's exterior. The fagate is divided into two stories and blends Roman, Greek, and Renaissance architectural motifs such as doubled pilasters, engaged columns, arched pediments, triangular pediments, niches, windows, Corinthian capitals, and large, scrolling volutes. Despite the many disparate elements, the church fagate is not overwhelming or chaotic. Patterns emerge to create a rich, unified space. The ornamental fagate of the Church of Il Gisù greatly inspired the elaborate architecture of the Baroque period. What is the Church of Tukasu? Built in the late 16th century by Giacomo della Porta. The Church of Il Gisù has what is considered to be the first Baroque facade in architecture. The church was built in Rome for the Order of the Jesuits. Its plan was similar to the traditional cruciform basilica plan, with a long nave and aisles. It was topped with a cupola a small dome. More shocking at the time was the church's exterior. The fagate is divided into two stories and blends Roman, Greek, 
and Renaissance architectural motifs such as doubled pilasters, engaged columns, arched pediments, triangular pediments. Niches, windows, Corinthian capitals, and large, scrolling volutes. Despite the many disparate elements, the church fagate is not overwhelming or chaotic. Patterns emerge to create a rich, unified space. The ornamental fagate of the church of I. L. Gisu greatly inspired the elaborate architecture of the Baroque period. Who was Bernini? The art of Gian Lorenzo Bernini, 1598-1680, defines Baroque style. Bernini was primarily a sculptor, but he also worked as an architect, painter, and poet. His sculpture is exceptionally naturalistic, it lives, breathes, and occasionally screams with life. Bernini was a charismatic player in the upper echelons of Rome's high society who was famous by age 20. He was patronized by popes and aristocrats and was known for his cool confidence. Some of his highest profile commissions include the design for the Baldacchino, a bronze canopy in St. Peter's Basilica, and the Ecstasy of St. Teresa, a marble sculpture in Santa Maria della Vittoria in Rome. Bernini experienced a hiccup in his success when his part of the redesign for the Fagate of St. Peter's Cathedral proved a failure. But his design for the piazza is hailed as an architectural masterpiece. Who was Bernini? The art of Gian Lorenzo Bernini, 1598-1680, defines Baroque style. Bernini was primarily a sculptor, but he also worked as an architect, painter, and poet. His sculpture is exceptionally naturalistic, it lives, breathes, and occasionally screams with life. Bernini was a charismatic player in the upper echelons of Rome's high society who was famous by age 20. He was patronized by popes and aristocrats and was known for his cool confidence. Some of his highest profile commissions include the design for the Baldacchino, a bronze canopy in St. Peter's Basilica, and the Ecstasy of St. Teresa, a marble sculpture in Santa Maria della Vittoria in Rome. Bernini experienced a hiccup in his success when his part of the redesign for the Fagate of St. Peter's Cathedral proved a failure. But his design for the piazza is hailed as an architectural masterpiece. What is St. Peter's Square? St. Peter's Square is far from rectangular. From an aerial perspective it actually looks like a keyhole, an oval next to a trapezoid. The space serves as a grand entrance to St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican. The heart of the Catholic Church. It is defined by a quadruple road colonnade that extends from the basilica's facade and then wraps around an ovoid piazza. 
Framing a central obelisk brought from Egypt by Roman Emperor Caligula. The shape of the colonnade has been described as a mother's arms that reach out from the church to embrace the worshippers who gather there. Gian Lorenzo Bernini's design for St. Peter's Square Known in Italian as Piazza San Pietro, is probably his best known architectural project. It was an incredible challenge to design a space that could contain the crowds that come to the Vatican to hear the Pope and to unify a space that contains styles from so many different periods of history. Bernini's design included hundreds of columns and pillars, along with hundreds of statues of saints. Like the Church of I. El Gisu, Bernini's Piazza San Pietro incorporates many different architectural elements. And yet it maintains a grand and harmonious feel. What is St. Peter's Square? St. Peter's Square is far from rectangular. From an aerial perspective it actually looks like a keyhole, an oval next to a trapezoid. The space serves as a grand entrance to St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican. The heart of the Catholic Church. It is defined by a quadruple road colonnade that extends from the basilica's facade and then wraps around an ovoid piazza. Framing a central obelisk brought from Egypt by Roman Emperor Caligula. The shape of the colonnade has been described as a mother's arms that reach out from the church to embrace the worshippers who gather there. Gian Lorenzo Bernini's design for St. Peter's Square Known in Italian as Piazza San Pietro, is probably his best known architectural project. It was an incredible challenge to design a space that could contain the crowds that come to the Vatican to hear the Pope and to unify a space that contains styles from so many different periods of history. Bernini's design included hundreds of columns and pillars, along with hundreds of statues of saints. Like the Church of I. El Gisu, Bernini's Piazza San Pietro incorporates many different architectural elements. And yet it maintains a grand and harmonious feel. What is the ecstasy of St. Teresa? The ecstasy of St. Teresa is a central sculpture in the Cornero Chapel in the Church of Santa Maria della Vittoria in Rome. It is considered to be a masterpiece of Baroque sculpture and was made by Gian Lorenzo Bernini between 1645 and 1652. The sculpture depicts Saint Teresa of Avila, who in life experienced powerful visions. In her writing, Saint Teresa describes an encounter with an Angel who stabbed her in the 138 heart with a golden spear. She believed the experience was an encounter with God. Bernini's complex sculpture, which dominates the chapel space, depicts this vision. Within an elevated niche, Saint Teresa seems to float amidst her undulating robes. Her toes peek out from underneath the mass of fabric. 
curling in a combination of pain and pleasure during this divine encounter. Her mouth is open and her head tilts back as a small angel gingerly grasps at her clothes with one hand and grips a golden spear in the other, the spear points directly at her breast. The figures appear to float because they are supported by a hidden cantilevered mass of marble. Mirroring the spear, bronze beams of light descend upon the pair from above. Helping to frame the scene from within the niche and emphasize the presence of the divine. In other parts of the chapel, marble bystanders watch from theater boxes, in awe. The sculpture is like a frozen theater piece. It is a highly illusionistic depiction of the pleasure and pain of Saint Teresa. And a surprisingly sensual representation of the divine. What is the ecstasy of St. Teresa? The ecstasy of St. Teresa is a central sculpture in the Cornero Chapel in the Church of Santa Maria della Vittoria in Rome. It is considered to be a masterpiece of Baroque sculpture and was made by Gian Lorenzo Bernini between 1645 and 1652. The sculpture depicts Saint Teresa of Avila, who in life experienced powerful visions. In her writing, Saint Teresa describes an encounter with an Angel who stabbed her in the 138 heart with a golden spear. She believed the experience was an encounter with God. Bernini's complex sculpture, which dominates the chapel space, depicts this vision. Within an elevated niche, Saint Teresa seems to float amidst her undulating robes. Her toes peek out from underneath the mass of fabric. Curling in a combination of pain and pleasure during this divine encounter. Her mouth is open and her head tilts back as a small angel gingerly grasps at her clothes with. One hand and grips a golden spear in the other, the spear points directly at her breast. The. Figures appear to float because they are supported by a hidden cantilevered mass of marble. Mirroring the spear, bronze beams of light descend upon the pair from above. Helping to frame the scene from within the niche and emphasize the presence of the divine. In other parts of the chapel, marble bystanders watch from theater boxes, in awe. The sculpture is like a frozen theater piece. It is a highly illusionistic depiction of the pleasure and pain of Saint Teresa. And a surprisingly sensual representation of the divine. Who was Caravaggio? Michelangelo Marisi, 1571-1610, better known as Caravaggio, was a complicated artist. He never had a workshop or any apprentices, and seemed more comfortable in the dark alleys of Rome than in the grand churches and palaces of his high-status patrons. Prone to violence, Caravaggio frequently ran into trouble with the law. In 1606, he killed a man in a street fight, prompting the Pope to issue a warrant for his death. 
He was, however, one of the greatest naturalist painters in history. And his powerfully realistic paintings promoted Christian themes of redemption and salvation. Caravaggio was also a skilled still life painter. One of his most notable still lives is Basket of Fruit, 1597. Against a yellow background, a wicker basket filled with aging fruits and leaves sits on a window ledge. The purple grapes are starting to turn a moldy gray color. Green leaves are wilting, some are covered in brown spots. A red and yellow apple is browning around two apparent wormholes. The former sheen and health of this fruit is apparent, but only a slight tinge of life remains. The basket of fruit is so close to the picture plane that it is almost confrontational. Forcing the viewer to notice the passing of time. The painting has been interpreted as symbolic of the fleetingness of youth and beauty. Who was Caravaggio? Michelangelo Marisi, 1571-1610, better known as Caravaggio, was a complicated artist. He never had a workshop or any apprentices, and seemed more comfortable in the dark alleys of Rome than in the grand churches and palaces of his high-status patrons. Prone to violence, Caravaggio frequently ran into trouble with the law. In 1606, he killed a man in a street fight, prompting the Pope to issue a warrant for his death. He was, however, one of the greatest naturalist painters in history. And his powerfully realistic paintings promoted Christian themes of redemption and salvation. Caravaggio was also a skilled still life painter. One of his most notable still lives is Basket of Fruit, 1597. Against a yellow background, a wicker basket filled with aging fruits and leaves sits on a window ledge. The purple grapes are starting to turn a moldy gray color. Green leaves are wilting, some are covered in brown spots. A red and yellow apple is browning around two apparent wormholes. The former sheen and health of this fruit is apparent, but only a slight tinge of life remains. The basket of fruit is so close to the picture plane that it is almost confrontational. Forcing the viewer to notice the passing of time. The painting has been interpreted as symbolic of the fleetingness of youth and beauty. What is the calling of Saint Matthew? The calling of Saint Matthew, c. 1599 to 1600 is a highly naturalistic baroque painting by Caravaggio, one of his most famous and enigmatic. The painting depicts a dark and dingy bar within which a group of young men sit around a table counting money. Suddenly, a beam of light pierces the darkness from the right. A figure of Christ appears, his hand raised much like Adam from Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam Fresco in the Sistine Chapel. Christ points to Levi, the tax collector, 
whose face is covered in divine light. What is the calling of Saint Matthew? The calling of Saint Matthew, c. 1599-1600, is a highly naturalistic Baroque painting by Caravaggio, one of his most famous and enigmatic. The painting depicts a dark and dingy bar within which a group of young men sit around a table counting money. Suddenly, a beam of light pierces the darkness from the right. A figure of Christ appears, his hand raised much like Adam from Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam Fresco in the Sistine Chapel. Christ points to Levi, the tax collector, whose face is covered in divine light. Levi is surprised at this and seems to question Christ with a gesture that indicates, Who, me? Christ is calling Levi, who will become Saint Matthew, to a life of faith rather than sin. Like other work by Caravaggio, the calling of Saint Matthew was shocking, and popular. For its realism and for its juxtaposition of Roman street life with divine, holy figures. One does not usually see Christ walk into a bar, for example. The painting is a good example of Caravaggio's use of tenebrism. An exaggerated form of chiaroscuro with sharp contrasts of dark and light. Caravaggio's style of tenebrism was hugely popular during the Baroque period. And was used by artists from Rembrandt to Zurbaran. The calling of Saint Matthew focuses on a familiar theme for Caravaggio. That of the redemption of even the most sinful souls. Levi is surprised at this and seems to question Christ with a gesture that indicates, Who, me? Christ is calling Levi, who will become Saint Matthew, to a life of faith rather than sin. Like other work by Caravaggio, the calling of Saint Matthew was shocking, and popular. For its realism and for its juxtaposition of Roman street life with divine, holy figures. One does not usually see Christ walk into a bar, for example. The painting is a good example of Caravaggio's use of tenebrism. An exaggerated form of chiaroscuro with sharp contrasts of dark and light. Caravaggio's style of tenebrism was hugely popular during the Baroque period. And was used by artists from Rembrandt to Zurbaran. The calling of Saint Matthew focuses on a familiar theme for Caravaggio. That of the redemption of even the most sinful souls. Who was Artemisia Gentileschi? like other Caravagisti, or followers of Caravaggio. The work of female painter Artemisia Gentileschi, 1593 c. 
1652, is characterized by dramatic diagonals, naturalism. Chiaroscuro, contrasts of dark and light, and powerful subject matter. She was arguably the most successful female artist of her day. She worked for the Duke of Tuscany and was the first female member of the Florentine Academy of Design. She is known for her paintings of the Old Testament story of Judith beheading Holofernes. A popular scene in the 16th and 17th centuries. And often analyzed in relation to a rape she suffered at the hands of her tutor when she was 17 years old. Male or female, Artemisia Gentileschi was one of the most skilled naturalist painters of the Baroque period. Who was Artemisia Gentileschi? Like other Caravagisti, or followers of Caravaggio. The work of female painter Artemisia Gentileschi, 1593 c. 1652, is characterized by dramatic diagonals, naturalism. Chiaroscuro, contrasts of dark and light, and powerful subject matter. She was arguably the most successful female artist of her day. She worked for the Duke of Tuscany and was the first female member of the Florentine Academy of Design. She is known for her paintings of the Old Testament story of Judith beheading Holofernes. A popular scene in the 16th and 17th centuries. And often analyzed in relation to a rape she suffered at the hands of her tutor when she was 17 years old. Male or female, Artemisia Gentileschi was one of the most skilled naturalist painters of the Baroque period.